And how are you today, Justin? I'm doing really well. Thank you very much, Lindsay. So um, I have so much to talk about with you. This yeah. has been a long time coming, but obviously we're here to talk about super kitties initially. And so you play 100%. a cat burglar. I'm I a do. big fan of cats. My cat might join us at some point. So awesome. I feel like this is kind of the role you were born to play. It's very, <laughs> it's very campy. Like it's kind of campy in the same way that like Lil Sweet is from Dr. Pepper's campy. Yeah, it's just fun. Um, I have always dreamed of voicing cartoons. Ever since I was young, I loved it. I would sit in the t in front of the TV and I would just like try and mimic the voices. And one of my favorite cartoons of all time is Sword in the Stone. Okay. And what I loved about that is that the boy, Arthur, in Sword in the Stone just got to be all these different animals and, and all this different stuff. And so the fact that then I would so many years later be able to play a really fun character like Cat Burglar for Disney. Um, it's just a dream come true. It's sort of casting against type for my guess, how you may have been known in the American Idol days. You know, you were like kind of America's sweetheart then. And like, you know, it's, it's first of all, it's a villain. You're playing a villain. Yeah, um, and like yeah, a you Disney were, villain. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not too scary, but yeah. um, I wonder if that's something you're trying to dig into more because, you know, speaking of roles you were born to play, um, <clears throat> I got props uh, today. <laughs> it's well, a sweet you know one. what? It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty sweet. sweet. You know, yeah. You know, I I don't think I'm trying to play against type. I think it's just being open and available to different things that just interest me and, and are fun to me. When I walked into the audition for Lil Sweet, I made one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life, which is to just have fun and to let go of the outcome. And the same principle holds true with everything that I've done with Cat Burglar and Disney. I mean, it is just something where we sit down and we do the voiceovers and I see the line and I let go of any sort of, oh my, am I gonna get it right? Is it, oh, are they gonna like me? Any of that. And we now have a setup where it's just like, okay, go for it. And I just do three, four takes different. I don't know what's gonna, I don't know what's gonna come out, but I just know that I'm going to have fun with it. And I think it shines in the character. Well, cheers to you. <laughs> hey, Today's episode that. of this Yahoo interview is not brought to you necessarily by Dr. Pepper. <laughs> but you're the sweet one. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Is it um <laughs> like, is it fun for you to be able to let loose that way, whether it's a little sweet yeah. or whether it's cat yeah. burglar? Like, because, you know, obviously having come off such a huge show which yeah. you know we'll get into maybe but you unlike some other people who've been on american idol you didn't know it was going to be a huge show because it was season one so you had no idea but to sort of i don't know people have a, a preconception view i imagine from sure you know. i mean well look you're you they say you're lucky to be typecast in this business right but at the end of the day just like american idol just like little sweet just like so many of the projects that I've been a part of in Broadway and in film and other TV, it comes back to that idea of just being open and available to the moment and having fun. I didn't know what was going to happen and nobody did during American Idol. Yeah. We didn't know, yeah. but what do we do? We just went with the flow. We had fun. We gave our best. We gave our all. Same thing with the Little Sweet audition same thing with everything that i've done here with super kitties and with disney it's just about going in and being willing to have fun and when you can do that it just shines there's a reason why a soda commercial that i've been on has lasted for seven years there's a oh. reason why american idol has lasted for like 20 years or 21 at this point there's a reason why these kinds of Disney cartoons last mm -hmm. is because they just shine. And so with Super Kitties, I'm excited for people to see Cat Burglar and to see how fun, look, he's a villain and he does take things, but he does, he does the wrong things for all the right reasons. And yet at the end of the day, what I love about him is that he always apologizes mm -hmm. and he admits that he makes a mistake. And I think that's really important, especially for kids now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a, a nine-year-old, an 11-year-old, and a oh, soon-to-be 18-year-old. Yeah. And one thing that I've noticed, I know, one thing that I've noticed is that making mistakes 
it's like really frowned upon my, my, my son, especially my nine-year-old, he was just up with me last night at like 1142 in the morning. And he was just talking about how, when the teacher's writing something, it says, okay, follow me. And he's so afraid to not be able to keep up. He's so afraid to make a mistake. Yeah. And so I feel like I get to not only help him see, but help other kids see that like making mistakes is okay, especially when you take responsibility for it. I mean, that's something you learned on, in a pretty extreme way on sure. live television of a huge show. Oh my goodness. Show. Yeah. My yeah. God. I do want to talk a little bit about that because you were saying, you know, we were talking about how you didn't um, necessarily know that uh, mm -hmm. none of us knew that what yeah. American I was going to become in season one. I've read that like you turned down an opportunity to be in like a Broadway play playing maybe a different sort of cat in the lion king <laughs> yeah um to be I, on american lp must if that's true people must have thought you were crazy at the time because i thought know. i was crazy but <laughs> so the story goes that i had for years been auditioning for the lion king another disney property yeah and i mean in college and, fe and feline as well yes feline as well and for years and years and years I auditioned. I did master classes, which is like the the step before you get into, which is the step before, sorry, I banged the microphone. Let me try that again. Sure. I had done master classes for The Lion King, the step that you take before you get onto the actual stage. And everyone in the company management was like, look, we, we, have, we, we want you, we just don't have the place for you right now. Hold on, hold on. I held on for years. And then all of a sudden the show that nobody's ever heard of called American Idol comes along. I get this yellow piece of paper that says you're going to Hollywood, right? They called it the golden ticket back then, but it was just a yellow piece of paper. It wasn't, and, it wasn't golden. Yeah, it was no, a yellow it was nothing, it, I mean, it was, it was golden rod ticket maybe. <laughs> and, and, uh, I remember sitting in my car, uh, and it was about a week before I had to go to California, LA, a place I'd never been before. And oh, I wow. get this call and they're like, Hey, it's Jay Bender casting we finally have the role for you we finally have the spot for you on broadway in the lion king we want you just how soon can you start and i was like oh and half my brain is like oh my goodness this is what i've dreamed of my entire life to be right, on broadway yeah. right and to then be in such a beautiful show like the lion king which is still around for a very good reason because it's amazing and i said to them um i have this show that I'm supposed to be in. Uh, it's out in LA. I might get cut. Can I call you in a week? And so they're like, yeah, yeah, call us in a week. So long story short, I'm going through the whole of the Hollywood experience, which is exhausting beyond measure. And I remember the day that I had to make that phone call to either say yes or no to Broadway. I was walking down the aisle in the Pasadena Civic Center. And it's this old, beautiful theater where you can like smell the wood and the dust and the age of the place. And I look over into the orchestra section and I'm facing the stage and I see all of my friends who I'm also competing against and we're all exhausted. We're all in this place of like, what is this? We have no idea what's going on. I looked up at the stage, I see the American Idol logo, the smoke, the lights, the dais with the judges, where the judges sit. and I just started crying. Now, not a normal thing for me at 22. Now wow. here at 44, <laughs> you know, after Cry children and dogs and everything, <laughs> like, you know, that's a much easier thing to happen for me. But at 22, it's not something that happened a lot. And so I'm tearing up and I'm trying not to let anybody see that I'm like weeping in the middle of, of the aisle. And this little voice said to me, go with this. And I, I looked up at the stage and I'm not kidding. It, it sounds fantastic, but it's so true. And I remember it so vividly. I just thought, oh my goodness, this stage that I'm performing on at the Pasadena Civic Center is the same stage that Michael Jackson first did the moonwalk in on mm -hmm. at the 50th anniversary of Motown. So many of my heroes have been on this stage and, and I, I don't know why I just have to go with this. So I called up Jay Bender cast and I say, thank you so very much for this opportunity. Please keep me in mind in the future. I'm going to go with this other thing. And I hadn't even been in the top 30 yet. There was oh no guarantees, no guarantees. And so I went with it. And the, and the bow to this story is that 10 years later, after American Idol ended, my season of American Idol ended, I would open my very first Broadway show in New York City. And we would have our opening night party in the hotel, in the conference room, where I first auditioned for American Idol. Wow, it's all full yeah, circle. Yeah, so it was a full circle moment. 
but at that moment, you know, the moment in Pasadena, I mean, no mm -hmm. one probably would have blamed you, especially since, as you say, you hadn't even made the, you were, you know, you were still, there were no guarantees. You did not know you were going to be in the top two. I don't think anyone would have blamed you if you had bailed no. on Idol. I mean, did you have some kind of sixth sense that it was going to be a big thing? I wish I could say that I did, but I didn't. I, I well. didn't No, Nobody knew. We did yeah. not know. We were living moment to moment to moment, especially during Hollywood week, which is designed to put you through the grinder, which is designed to separate the people who are, I, I'll say who are good from the people who are able to handle the pressure, right? Because there are a lot of, when you get to Hollywood week, everybody's good, but there's that True. factor, that X factor that takes you from being good to being able to handle the, I mean, going from zero to 6,000 miles an hour, that is every single week the rehearsals the the um you know for us filming the 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 commercials to getting into the studio and recording and do all the things that you have to do mm -hmm. and so it's a gauntlet but no i didn't know that it would be big and I, I mean i think had i chosen to go with the broadway show and to go with the lion king i would like to think and hope that i would still be performing on broadway i'm sure um, you would be and and still be uh, in that mix and i feel very yeah. i feel so lucky to be a part of the broadway community because there has been no community that i've been a part of that's been more accepting more loving they don't care where you come from as long as you show up you do your job you're kind and and uh you tell the story um they love you and i love them for that as well yeah, it all worked out. I'm I'm curious to ask you about this because I actually very recently, like only about two weeks ago, interviewed another American Idol runner up who's had success on Broadway, who's Catherine McPhee. Yeah, she's great. And she is great. And, you know, yeah. she, um, like you, is someone who's had a lot of success in theater and in acting yeah. and things like waitress? that. Waitress? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I would have but... loved to have seen her in Waitress. Me too. I uh, but she's had a lot of success in in kind of other things. But she was pretty candid about the fact that when it came to like a recording career, it never maybe quite gelled for her. You know, in terms of her, yeah. And it's sort of a similar thing to you. You've had a yeah. lot of success in other areas, and I mean this with no shade at all. But like a lot of idols could say this. They've had success. They've branched out beyond just like being a pop star, and they do right. acting, they do pr presenting. They're right. a little sweet, you know, they're, <laughs> they, you know, do all sorts of other things. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering how I'd like to take, cause we're coming up actually on the 20th anniversary of we your debut album. Oh, was, oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Good cause grief. it was 2003, I believe when it came out. I think so. Yeah. And I'm wondering, you know, obviously maybe the expectations weren't there the way they were for later seasons because it was season one, but obviously, mm. you know, the show had been huge. Kelly Clarkson was off to a start like what was can you take me a little bit back to like it must have yeah. been an odd experience because like there was it probably was. a lot of there was a lot of hype around you in fact i mean if i'm not mistaken i seem to recall a lot of people thought you were gonna win actually i mean it it was it was not a done deal like when no. the two of you were standing on that stage that kelly was gonna win it could have gone yeah. either way i think i'll i'll tell you this when it when it comes to the right person winning the story that i love to tell is that i was standing backstage with the then executive producer um nigel lithgow and we I were love nigel i know he's great right <laughs> and so we were watching kelly sing the ultimate song for the show a moment like this and i remember leaning over to him and saying you know if i win this you're gonna have to hire security and he turns <laughs> to me and he looks he says why i said because there's going to be a riot. Do you see, do you hear what's going on? I mean, it was so evident with that song mm. that it was Kelly's. Mm. And I knew because it had become such a juggernaut at that point, we knew that we had 30 million viewers, 50 at spiked at one point during the, the finale itself. We knew that we had something at that point, right? In the beginning in Pasadena, mm. but once we had gone through the machine, once it had come down to Kelly and I, we both knew that something was going to happen and that we were on to something. Mm -hmm. And so as I was standing there holding her hand and Ryan read her name, I was genuinely excited. I was so happy. A, because 
my good friend had won, right? B, because we could finally say that we were done and, <laughs> and move on to something that was not as grueling, although it would be grueling in its own way moving forward from there. Um, but ultimately the right thing happened. And I think it speaks to American Idol, the brand, what American Idol has done over the past 20, 21 years that so many of us from that show have had success in so many different facets of the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. No other show of its kind, modern show anyway, of its kind can say that. And sure. so the fact that I'm able to go on and do things like you know, host and Broadway and Lil Sweet and mm -hmm. things and like Cat Burglar Kitties, right? Like that I'm able to to be a voice and 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 I get to show up in my sweats and yet still deliver an impact. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then to be able to do it for an awesome company like Disney is, is really sweet. Yeah, I absolutely, you know, I sometimes take issue with people who, if they are talking about, I don't know, whoever they're talking about on, you know, what, on, a from American Idol, who they feel like mm -hmm. didn't do so well or whatever. And I'm not necessarily referring to you. I'm just talking about like, oh, lots of let's people. just say it. Let's just say it. my album was a flop. The movie that I did after that was an absolute flop. And I, I just like, I, it just is what it is. But, but I have the, the benefit of 20 years of hindsight to be able to see, oh my goodness, this business is truly cyclical. It goes around mm -hmm. and around and around. And but if you you got do, go I'm sorry to interrupt, but what I was trying to say was just like, people have to define success in different ways. I mean, you're mm -hmm. better for having been on American Idol, you know, <laughs> to say, you know, in terms of, it launching a career for you like success yeah. can be doing voiceover work. it can be doing broadway it can be doing mm -hmm. commercials it doesn't have to be you have a number one album i mean that's nice if that happens but there's Great. other ways to have success in show business but um since you did so bluntly bring it up i mean you know there like i said there were certain expectations about mm -hmm. coming off of that big show what mm -hmm. happened with with the album you know do was it not promoted well enough i don't recall there being a music video for it or anything no like I, I you know what i think we were all figuring it out mm -hmm. and i got lost in the shuffle because at the end of the day it doesn't benefit anyone for your contestants album to not do well for your contestants products to not do well right of course, yeah. so i don't think there was any malicious intent but i think in the transition between season one and season two which came right on the heels of season one mm -hmm. in the uh necessary task of making sure that kelly had the best and most viable record and everything else like that um and and just with just the way things were I, I can't really describe it any other way than that just in the shuffle i got lost I, that's it at the end of the day i was the oh and and oh and here's this album or oh <laughs> and here's the and and it's nothing to do with kelly it's nothing to do with uh, a clay or reuben it's just what my place was in the system at the time and so at the end of the day, it was really painful. Like I remember it being something that just crushed me because I had mm. always wanted to have a record deal. I'd always wanted to be a recording artist, right? I had these two sort of tracks in my mind where it's like, okay, I'm, I, I wanna be on Broadway or I also want to, to record and, and sing and tour all over the world. And yet it's so interesting because I got to do it. I got to tour all over the country for 30,000 screaming fans every single night with the American Idol tour. I later on would do it with my own album. I would later on do it as I went over and entertained the troops in Afghanistan at the time. And so it was this sort of bittersweet experience where I didn't have what I wanted, but I got what I needed, which was mm. all of the experience in the industry. And I'm so glad that the record flopped that the oh. movie flopped. I'm so glad because I still got to work with amazing people like Babyface. I still got to stand in Video Village from in from Justin and Kelly and listen to the producers talk, listen to the directors talk, listen to, and talk to the, I, I was a sponge throughout that whole experience. And I could have given up and I could have shrunk, but instead I just was like, I'm gonna take in everything that I can. And I, I just, it's what I tell my students all the time. It's just keep your eyes open 
realize that everything is serving you for your good and just be available to the moment. Good, bad, everything in between. And here 20 years later, I've been able to do film, television, Broadway, voiceovers, commercials, all kinds of stuff. I would, I would say that I'm arguably the most versatile in terms of career-wise person to come off of American Idol because I kept my eyes open, because I'm willing to host, I'm willing to just go and have fun and, and see what happens. And it's been one of the greatest experiences uh, of my life the past 20 years. Can we please talk about from Justin to Kelly? I have, yeah. inter I have interviewed Kelly about this. I interviewed her. <laughs> she, she has she some was, pretty strong opinions about this. But she was a pretty good sport. I didn't know how she was going to take it. At the time I was interviewing her because she had like a cruise line coming up. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, and there was going to be live entertainment on it. And I was right. like, you know, we need a, from Justin to Kelly, like nautical number. I mean, it took place at sea, right? right. And she actually cracked up and, and was a very good sport about it. And it <laughs> got off on this whole tangent. Yeah, she had yeah. strong feelings. She said what she was basically found, she had to do this movie. Mm -hmm. She cried. She tried mm -hmm. to get out yeah. of it. She said that initially, like it wasn't supposed to be the two of you maybe it was supposed to be just like whoever wins american idol was supposed to do it and then mm. they decided to make it i don't know if mm. you have any knowledge of this they decided to make it a, a duo movie i think because um and she said you were into it that she was 100%. not into it but you were okay i was 100 percent into it i mean i'd Tell come me again it's like where did i come from i came from musicals I came from that world, that theater world. She did not. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, she had a very strong opinion about wanting to really focus on her recording career. And you can see how that's paid off. So, I mean, her instincts were correct there. And I also had a really strong opinion about wanting to do more theater, more theatrical, more musical things. And now here, almost seven Broadway shows later, you can see how that's paid off for me. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I wanted to do it. And I loved the idea of it. And um, while it, it wasn't an uh, Oscar uh, <laughs> award-winning script or anything like that, you, if you just look at it from the box office perspective, it, it's about uh, maybe a third of the actual picture because the personnel in that movie were outstanding. I mean, I'm talking about from producers to crew to cast i mean the dancers that we had in that were the dancers of the day touring with everyone from britney to christina to uh, justin timber i mean all the people right uh and um the music writers we had were wonderful music writers i mean that that never got released um and i have a copy of oh the you soundtrack. do they wow, did send out in amazing. advance they did send out in advance it. I have it on the original iPod, like with a disc, you can hear the disc spinning. Like I have it sitting on an original wow. iPod somewhere. It's wild. But so anyway, like it, it, I wanted to do it. And again, I was there for the experience. I, when I could have been in my trailer was sitting in video village and I was watching and I was learning and I was just, cause I didn't know any, I'd never been on a film set like that before. I mean, working on it anyway. And so again, I just was there. I learned what I needed to learn. I got what I got out of it. Yeah, it was a box office flop, but ultimately it serves me here 20 plus years later. Why do you think it was a flop? I mean, it was coming off of, as we've made very clear, a huge show. Both right. you and Kelly were mm -hmm. popular. She was very worried it would hurt her career. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously it did not. I don't know if you feel it hurt yours at all. No, I think that, I think the the biggest challenge with that film is that neither one of us were really actor actors at that point, right? We were surrounded by wonderful actors, one of them being Anika Noni Rose I know. Um, and, and others, um, but, uh, and, and, and Brian Dietzen, who's now uh, on one of the procedural shows, it's like an NCIS or one of the, one of those shows and has been on it forever um, and is phenomenal. Um, but I think that was part of it. And I think that, you know, and, and I think you could speak to this better than I could. There are just times when you have a juggernaut show like that and the media and or detractors w are going to look for anything to try and take it down a notch. I mean, mm. we were wiping the floor with so many other TV shows, right? And, yeah. and it was insane. And so 
you know, and and I think that there are things to be desired from the script. There are things to be desired from a lot of it. And yet I'll say that there are a lot of people who still come up to me who said, I watched that so many times. I love that. So it's more like a cult classic. It's more like beach blanket bingo, right? Mm -hmm. With, uh, exactly. you know, speaking of, speaking to Disney, like, you know, with Annette Funicello and, and Frankie, you mm -hmm. know, it's just like, it's that cult classic. And no matter what people say, no matter what the box office numbers were, I'm proud to have made it. And, um, and it was a wonderful experience for me. Well, I think we're coming up on the 20th or maybe it just passed, but like, I think, I think it's so. the 20th anniversary of the film. I yeah. feel like it might've done better if it, I mean, this wasn't something that existed in 2002, 2003, mm -hmm. but if it had been like a streaming thing, oh, if that sure. had existed then, as opposed to, you know, making a theatrical release, if it had been yeah. like that sort of thing, I think maybe, yeah. can you, can you talk you to someone about <laughs> it's hard when you go up against the Hulk, right? I mean, also Geely happened that year. Remember that, uh, right? But, but we went up against the Hulk. It was it was a challenge all around, really. But at the end of the day, um, it it's a cult classic, and people come up to me and they just tell me that they love it. Can you talk to someone about getting it re-released or getting that soundtrack re-released? It <laughs> or re-released. It never came out. It never that's, did that's come out. That's the thing that was weird to me because even if yeah. like you know we can say maybe the film was had its issues or whatever it like mm -hmm. you know the music was good and it was sung by people who obviously know how to sing yeah. one or came in almost won a yeah. reality show for their singing right but i think it goes back to that transition right there is there were uh um the same people who were making the movie with the same people who are making the television show, with mm -hmm. the same people who are producing albums, right? Mm -hmm. And so with all those balls in the air, a few are bound to drop. Yeah. And so I feel like with my album, perhaps with the film, those are just the balls that dropped. And at the end of the day, the main focus, I would say the two main focuses, were making sure that the American Idol, Kelly Clarkson, had the ability to show all of the wondrousness <laughs> that that is and was and will forever be her talent and making sure that that second season firmly cemented the success mm. that was the first season right and so those things were i i believe i don't know for a fact but i believe those are the most important things and you see that kelly now here 20 years later is an absolute superstar and that American Idol, having moved to the Disney family, is yeah. still and will always be the juggernaut that it has been. Yeah, that's another way things have sort of come full circle that, you know, you're still part of the whole Disney world. Well, yeah. you know, you have, you know, such a great attitude about everything. And, and obviously you've- <laughs> Hard <you> one. <laughs> that's what I was about to ask. It's like, you have you have a great attitude about things and you've yeah. seized every opportunity that, you know, be, being part of such a huge phenomenon like American Idol has brought to you, you know, you've had opportunities that other people could never have because of mm -hmm. the fact that you were in on the ground floor of something so huge. But, you know, going back to, you know, during, you know, uh, going back to, I don't know, 20 years, 21 years, were there times when you regretted it? Especially, you know, we've talked about the fact that you passed up uh, Lion King and said, were there mm -hmm. ever times where you're like, what did I get myself into? Why oh, did I course. do this? I'm so pigeonholed or... I've got of this course. mark on me as somebody who had an album that didn't do well, or you, as you say, not my word, your word, flop, Absolutely. whatever. Yeah. Were there Because I think I've read sometimes. I mean, there was one time you wrote this like blog post and the media kind of ran with it. And oh, did they ever? It was one where like they they basically were writing headlines saying you were like. It's like skipping you know, meals so I could feed yeah, my family. That you were like, you know, poor basically. And, yeah. and they, you know, obviously gossip columns can but anyway I, let me ha let you answer the question ha were there sure. moments where you were kind of like i wish i'd mm -hmm. never done this or whatever yeah i mean when you have the level of success like that first season of american idol was 30 million people live every single week and then all of a sudden on the back end of that you have an album that flops a movie that flops and all those expectations uh in your own in my own mind weren't met mm. 
I mean, that's a big, big letdown. And there were definitely times when I felt like, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go do the Hollywood thing. I don't, I just, why, what, why, why? And the thing that really, I think, cemented that for me and was actually a catalyst for a huge change in my life was one night I was watching Saturday Night Live. I was in living in Beverly Hills in this huge home and I didn't want to go out. It was Saturday night. I didn't want to go out into LA and the Hollywood scene and everything. I just wanted to, I just wanted to just chill. And so I turn on SNL, right? Always a good time. And it was back when Tina Fey was reading the news. And I will never forget sitting in my beautiful room in my, you know, one billion count Egyptian thread sheet bed and seeing her go through the news and chuckling because it was great. And then all of a sudden, right next to her head, my face pops up. And so I sit up and I'm like, okay, now having been through the ringer, having been made fun of for my hair, having been uh, uh, the brunt of late night jokes at that time, I knew it wasn't gonna be something positive, but I had no idea exactly what it would be and how profound it would be. And so what she said was something to the effect of this week, former American Idol, Justin was dropped from his record label by RCA. And then they flipped the picture and and they said, and now he looks like this. And they flipped the picture and it was a picture of Art Garfunkel, another person (laughs) who has big hair, right? Right, but significantly older, grayer, and that was the joke. And it would have been really funny had I not found out also with however many other million people were watching SNL that I had been dropped. That was the moment that I found out that I had been dropped from my record label. And so at that point, it dawned on me. I mean, you want to talk about wool off of the eyes. It's like, oh, I have fame, the fortune, the cars, the clothes. I was literally living in a house where I could take off my clothes in my walk-in closet, put them on the floor, and they would be washed and folded back in the drawers. Then all the things that I thought I wanted, all the things that we think we want, and yet I was miserable. And I realized that I was 3,000 miles away because my family is mostly from the East Coast. I was 3,000 miles away living in LA from anyone who I believed really truly cared about me and loved me. And so that was a huge catalyst for me. And it was probably the lowest point for me to then say, okay, what am I going to do? And it really, it was, it was a challenge. It wasn't all, I have a good attitude now, but I'd say it's hard one because I, I stayed in bed for quite some time after that. I didn't want to get up and want to go out because I felt ashamed. Mm. Right. And, and I questioned why I had done all this. So to your point, yeah, of course. But then eventually I just got over myself and I said, okay, either I'm going to recognize that the gifts that I still have, right. I'm going to allow myself to be defined by this experience or I'm going to define this experience. And so that set me on a journey of just doing what was required, putting myself out there, failing, trying again, failing again, trying again, learning this, getting a little bit of peace over here, uh, um, hosting for TV Guide Network and Mm -hmm. getting back out on the red carpet as a host, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And and then continuing to audition, continuing to work and work and work and work, and eventually making my way back to the East Coast, reigniting my Broadway career. Um, And then, you know, from there, again, it's like I say, this business is cyclical. And as Mm -hmm. long as you stay in the game, which is one of the hardest things to do, you're kind to people and you do good work. It'll always come back around. First one was American Idol for me. Second one was Broadway for me. Mm-hmm. Third one was a little sweet for me. Um, and, and now here we are on another one for a, a huge, you know, Disney cartoon. Mm-hmm. 
right, is, is for me. And, and, and now I'm moving also into a phase where I'm mentoring other performers. And, and you'll, you'll see something about that coming um, uh, not too, too far down the pike later on this year. Um, uh, and so I, I just feel like, again, it's just like you stay in the game and it was cyclical and cyclical, but it was for a time very challenging. But, but as I tell my students, it's just being able to push through those moments and recognize that there is gold to be found in them. Well, a toast to you. Cheers. Uh, because I do think it's, yeah, I think it's very important because, you know, you were at the ground floor and there was no blueprint for this, mm -hmm. but I think shows like not just American Isle, but X Factor, The Voice, whatever, they, they sell this thing that's good for TV that if you've won or gone very far on the show, it's like, all oh, your dreams are going to come true. Right. And lots of winners uh, and, you know, finalists from all of these shows have learned that, no, the work is starting now. Just because I was on this yes. big TV show doesn't mean I'm going to get jobs or going to sell yes. records or whatever. So I think the career opportunities you've been able to carve out whether it's Cat Burglar or Little Sweet or Broadway or whatever, like you kind of wrote, I, I, it's really interesting to hear that you're a mentor. You could do a workshop for reality show contestants. Sure. About what <laughs> sure, I wrote what a book. do you do now? You should write a book. After yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Maybe we can co author well, that considering you had the idea. Let's, uh, well, we have it on video here, but let's take that conversation offline. I really do sure. think, yeah, I do think there's yeah. a lot of people maybe who, you were 22 when you went on the show, but you know, there's- Do nothing. People, there's I was like Jon Snow. <laughs> but there's people who go on these shows who are teenagers. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, you at least maybe were a little bit older to realize and a little savvy, even though it might have mm -hmm. been hard for you. But some people don't know what they're getting into. So like, yeah, yeah just a little bit. But I know I need I to let you go, but I you will we'll do a book. You're going to get from <laughs> Justin to Kelly somehow re-release. You're going to get that soundtrack out. Working on it. <laughs> I would suggest uh, an album. I know it's been a while since you've done an album of... um heavy metal covers in as little sweet <laughs> little sweet sure. does actually have an album really i didn't know yes. this yes is there it... is uh i'm not sure if it's still available but uh you just dig dig into that because uh call call somebody over at keurig dr pepper because i believe that there is they're like little 90 second spots but oh it's out God. there actually you can find it on on the uh, internet on i'm the internet. going to find it and then maybe a cat burglar record Hey, look, from your lips to Disney's ears. Super um, Kitty soundtrack by Cat Yeah, I'm excited it. about it. There, there, there may be some music. There may be some music in this. In you this sing. Show. You sing it. Yeah, there, there may be a little bit of singing that happens in there. But at the end of the day, um, I just feel lucky that after 20 years, I'm still able to be a part of wonderful projects like Super Kitties and play really fun characters like Cat Burglar and to work with an amazing cast the the kids who voice the the kitties are all so sweet and just <laughs> you know here 20 years later to think that i'm able to do something that hopefully will positively uh impact and influence kids in a world where there are a lot of wild influences um it's just awesome for me so i feel feel very very blessed and very lucky for that well, I feel blessed and lucky that I got to have this chat with you. Um, congratulations on everything you got going on. We'll definitely talk again some other time. Great. Thanks. All I right. appreciate it. Take yeah. care, Justin.